Welcome everyone to this episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone. It's exciting to be here once again. It's hard to believe that we're already getting ready here in a few days to begin a new month uh, in the year. February is going to be upon us in just a few days, and I'm just really excited to hear that many of you are moving into your planning for spring events. I continue to hear about uh, teams and, and organizations that are starting to recruit for table hosts, for events. I'm hearing of proposals that are getting out to our partners and uh, that as a nonprofit organization, we're just moving forward in all of our efforts. Uh, I got some really good feedback from some of you on our latest newsletter the uh, that is addressing planning. I know that if you don't aren't on our newsletter and don't receive our newsletter electronic newsletter uh, please look down into the description section below uh, I list in there how you can get on our newsletter list and so uh, make sure that you uh, get added to that list and get on there as soon as possible to enjoy some of the benefits and tips and things that we get if you're on Instagram we're getting some great feedback on our Thursday tips it seems to be a, a real hit with some of you. Just uh, two minutes or less, I give you some Thursday morning tips on how to raise money. Also, uh, on uh, Wednesdays, we have fundraising and film, and I know a lot of you have enjoyed that. Those movie buffs who uh, see movie clips that you think would be uh, applicable for the area of fundraising. So I hope you really enjoyed that. And then also we're, we're getting some really good feedback on our community site and on our Facebook group with regard to our Monday morning three things that you need to be thinking about from a fundraising standpoint for the week. So if you're interested in joining our Facebook group, please do so and uh, go out there to our Facebook group and also, uh, as I said, on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. Well, let's dive right into our first question here today and uh, we'll address issues that, uh, that you have. Our first question today is from Brenda in Iowa City, Iowa, and Brenda asks, I've heard some things have changed with regard to matching gifts. What would that be? Well, Brenda, thank you so much for your question about matching gifts. I know that for for many of you uh, that watch this channel on a regular basis, you understand that for me, I love matching gifts. Matching gifts have been a game changer for our events. Matching gifts have been a game changer for uh, putting that into direct mail letters. A matching gift has been a game changer for proposals to major donors and uh, also for raising personal support as well too. And so I use that at year end myself and saw tremendous success. So matching gifts uh, are a chain game changer. And when you get an opportunity to use a matching gift, I would do that at any time that you can do it. Uh, if you have the opportunity and have some major partners, major donors who are interested in your matching effort and they want to be the lead gifts for that, who will match all your gifts, take advantage of that as much as possible. Now, things have changed recently uh, with a number of the regulatory agencies, especially the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Uh, for years, really, we have gone under the assumption that there were really two kinds of matching gifts. There were conditional and unconditional matches. The conditional match were those matches that we are so used to, which is if, if you raise five dollars or you raise five hundred thousand dollars that money is matched by major donors and if you raised less than five hundred thousand dollars that whatever amount you raised was matched so in other words you would say uh, someone has agreed to match every gift of fifty thousand dollars or have re agreed to match every gift given up to fifty thousand dollars and that money would be would be matched now if as i said if you raise less than fifty thousand if you raise forty eight thousand dollars you would get forty eight thousand dollars if you raise forty five thousand you get forty five thousand dollars that is a conditional match now an unconditional match would be that if someone 
agreed to match every gift up to 50000 and you got 48000 or 45000 they would still give you the $50,000. Well, what's happened is that a lot of the regulatory agencies have not felt comfortable with especially the unconditional side of things that people with a wink and a nod will still give you that $50,000 uh, even though you raise less than that because you put it out there that it was up to $50,000. If, if you raise less than that, then you would not get that. That was kind of the assumption. But even though donors would give that to you, uh, as I said, kind of with a wink and a nod, they'd still give you the remaining amount. Um, the regulatory agencies have really changed that recently. What they have done is they have said to us, number one, first of all, they've said that if the money comes in advance of the campaign being finished, so in other words, someone says, I will raise up to, I'll give you up to $50,000, and then they write you a check for $50,000. Well, the regulatory agencies are saying, no, that's not a true match. That would be more of what they would call a challenge gift. Now, some organizations have used challenge gifts, and they've put it out there. Essentially, it is a challenge gift is almost considered a reverse match in that you would go before um, another major donor, a second major donor, or go before your dinner and say, people have put $50,000 on the table. They would like you to match it. So in a sense, you're going to your dinner audience and say, people put 50000 Would you match their money? The problem with that is that a challenge gift never raises as much as a true matching gift. Because the people in the audience, or even a major donor, a second major donor that you're going in front of, says, well, why why do I need to match their money? Um, they put that up there. That's that's fine. That's good for them. But why do I need to match their money? That incentive isn't there. But unfortunately, that's what that's kind of the uh, the hand we have to be dealt now with the regulatory agencies. What they do say is what qualifies as a true match would be that the campaign or the effort needs to be completed before the money comes in. So in other words, the idea and the theory behind that is that if they were just going to write you a $50,000 check, then the match really wasn't true and valid. But if they waited until you knew about how much came in, as I use the example of forty-five or 48000 as you were headed towards the end of your match or completing your match, you knew that we only raised 48000 so they would write you a check for $48,000. And so in their minds, it keeps it as a real, honest, upfront, and true match. And so that's why it's really important when you're talking to your pace setter or lead gift people, the people who are going to match, you ask them not to give their money up front. You ask them to wait till the campaign is done and finished and then uh, then you uh, they can write you a check for the amount now I know it's hard to determine when a campaign or when an effort is done because what happens is you know it sometimes we all know that from a from an event as an example we might get a check two months three months six months later so it's really hard to say when it's done but I think they have given us the latitude to be able to determine when a gift truly is when a campaign truly is done and you've gotten your at least in your mind uh, some of your last gifts that you've gotten now you may run into the problem where a partner will say to you I have got to give a gift because of end of the year because of selling certain amounts of stock that maybe have reached a peak uh, or at a high point or because uh, of a company that maybe has some uh, SEC rules or regulations that they have to sell a stock within a certain time. If that has to be done, uh, one of the things that they could do is put it in a donor advised fund. They could go to um, National uh, Christian Foundation or a Fidelity and other outside organization set up a donor advised fund, put the money in there, and then instruct that fund to give the money to your organization once the campaign is done. So there's ways that you can work within the system, within the rules, within the regulations. We want to do everything we can, even if you aren't a member of a regulatory agency, uh, it's really important that you abide by 
all the rules of the profession and the rules of regulatory agencies. Because the IRS continues to monitor those kinds of regulatory agencies, some of the rules, some of the policies. And as a 501c3, 501c4, um, any other uh, nonprofit tax exempt organization, um, they, they're going to make sure that you abide by the rules and regulations that are out there because chances are they're going to be monitoring those kinds of things as well too. So it's important that you do abide by those. So those are some of the new rules and regulations with regard to matches. Brenda, I hope that helped you. I hope that um, set things straight. Certainly, if you've got additional questions, you can put those down in the comment section. You can always reach me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. We'll see you next video. Take care.